हे गाइस अ वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू सो माय सेल्फ नेहा गुप्ता योर मेंटर फॉर करंट अफेयर्स दोज हु आर वाचिंग मी फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम सो इट्स ऑल न्यू फॉर देम बट दोज हु वॉच मी रेगुलरली सो आई वुड लाइक टू अपोलॉजाइज गाइस बिकॉज लास्ट वीक देर वर सम डेज वेन आई कुड नॉट टेक दी सेशन बिकॉज आई वॉज नॉट डूइंग वेल आई वॉज नॉट वेल बट यू डोंट हैव टू वरी बिकॉज आई एम गोइंग टू टेक ऑल दी सेशन रेगुलरली फ्रॉम नाउ ऑन ओके सो लेट्स बिगिन दिस वीडियो बट बिफोर मूविंग टू द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन प्लीज सब्सक्राइब आर चैनल एंड हिट द बेल नोटिफिकेशन एंड आल्सो अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट अनाउंसमेंट फॉर दोज हु आर वाचिंग मी फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम दैट गाइस यू कैन गेट द पीडीएफ ऑफ दिस सेशन ऑन द टेलीग्राम ग्रुप एंड द लिंक ऑफ द टेलीग्राम ग्रुप इज इन द डिस्क्रिप्शन बिल सो ऑन दैट नोट लेट्स बिगिन विद आवर फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन Recently Ministry of Education has formed a 12 member national steering committee for developing the national curriculum frameworks the committee will be chaired by the former isro chief k kasturi ranjan who was also the chairman of the drafting committee of national education policy 2020 the committee has been asked to develop four national curriculum frameworks within the ambit of the national education policy 2020 identify the framework which does not fall under the terms of reference of the committee so guys terms of reference refer to the work duties that the committee has been formed for okay so this committee has been formed for developing four curriculums so you have to identify which is the incorrect option out of these five options so we have national curriculum framework for school education for early childhood care and ed, uh, education national curriculum framework for teacher education for digital education and for adult education so which one is the incorrect option the incorrect option is d so national framework for digital education is the right answer for this question this committee would not frame a curriculum regarding the digital education apart from this this will form the curriculum for school education this will form the curriculum for early childhood care and education for teacher education which includes your courses like bed med so those courses come under the teacher education then adult education so these are the four curriculums for which this committee has been formed and you have to memorize that k kasturi ranjan was the chairperson of the committee that developed the national education policy 2020 okay now let's have a look what we have in the details okay so first of all you need to know that it is a 12 member committee it is a national steering committee for developing the national curriculum frameworks okay so this we have already discussed and this we have also discussed the tenure of this committee will be 3 years and the director of ncert will uh, assist the steering committee okay and at present the director of ncert is shridhar shrivastav so do remember this as well now guys this is the basic framework this is the uh, breakthrough in the new education policy the this was the traditional structure and this is the new structure proposed okay so this is the very basic glimpse that i am giving you of the new education policy but let me tell you that this new education policy is a very very important document you can expect a question out of it from your in your nabard phase 2 or your upcoming rbi or sebi phase 1 and phase 2 so do prepare it thoroughly moving on to the next question which of the following is the correct option in relation to the state food secure food safety index 2020 to 2021 option a says human resource and institutional data with weightage 40% compliance with 10% weightage food testing infrastructure and surveillance with 20% weightage all a b and c option e none of the above so by looking at the options merely you would have guessed that these are the parameters of this index so which parameter has been given with the correct weightage is the question exactly so here the right answer is option c food testing infrastructure and surveillance has 20% weightage whereas the weightage is given in the two options above this c option are wrong so let's have a look at this index in detail which has been released by fss ai food safety and standards authority of india and you would know that in nabard you had a question on the full form of sss ai fss ai 
okay so here i would like to advise my students that guys the full forms or the short forms of government bodies that are there in news do not ignore them just go through the full forms of those bodies as well for example you have dg uh, dcgi director controller general of india so these are the direct drug controller general of india sorry so these are some of the short forms or uh, the full forms of which are important for you to know okay moving on to the index so this is the third edition of this index and this index measures the performance of states and union territories on the basis of the food safety standards that they maintain and how do the how does this index judge the food safety performance of states on the basis of five parameters which have been given along with their weightages so human resource and institutional data has 20% weightage compliance has 30% weightage food testing has 20% weightage training and capacity building has 10% weightage consumer empowerment has 20% weightage so you have to remember the parameters along with their weightages because they are important and can be asked in the examination directly okay so these are the rankings for the purpose of ranking this index has divided the states and union territory into three parts okay large states small states and union territory in large states you have 20 in small you have eight states and in union territory we have already eight uts so here are the top five states and bottom five states in the large states category in small you have top five and the uh, rest bottom three again in uts you have top five and the rest bottom three okay so these are the rankings given by this index that you need to know kir gujarat has stopped in the large state category whereas goa has stopped in the small scale category and jammu and kashmir has stopped in the ut category next question is who has won the sdg progress award 2021 prime minister of slovenia prime minister of fiji bangladesh indonesia brunei which one is the right answer the right answer is option c Sheikh Hasina the prime minister of Bangladesh has won this SDG progress award 2021 and why do you think that she has won this award because the progress that her country made that Bangladesh made under her guidance under her leadership towards achieving the sustainable development goals also the performance or the steps taken by Bangladesh um, during the covid 19 are also appreciated by united nations okay so you also need to know this thing who has been appointed as the chief of the air staff so you have the five options out of which option e vivek ram choudhary is the right answer sandeep singh has been appointed as the vice chief of the air staff he is the chief of the air staff vivek ram choudhary v r choudhary okay how many blue flag certified beaches are present in india so recently two new beaches have got the blue flag certification therefore the total number of blue flag certified beaches in india has been increased to 10 okay so eden beach in puducherry and kovalam beach in tamil nadu have been added into the blue flag certification certified beaches list in india and now we have 10 blue flag certified beaches can you tell me how many ramsar sites do we have in india this is your question that you have to mention in the comment section below okay coming back to this question india has set an ambitious target i must say to get 100 more beaches under the blue flag certification in the next 3 years it is truly a very ambitious target that the indian government has set for itself so guys this is the map of blue flag certified beaches in india let's have a look at it shivrajpur in gujarat gogla in diu padubidri and kasargod both of these beaches so karnataka has two blue flag certified beaches and you can clearly see that it is the only state having two blue flag certified beaches okay so do remember this
Kappad in Kerala, Kovalam in uh, Tamil Nadu and Eden in Puducherry. So these two are the latest one. Radhanagar in Andaman and Nicobar. Rushi Konda in Andhra Pradesh and Golden Beach or also known as Puri Beach in Odisha. Okay. So these are the 10 Blue Flag Certified Beaches. Do you know which organization gives this certification? Let's have a look at that. Let's go in, into depth of this blue flag certification. So the very first thing that you need to know about this certification is that it is given by a Denmark based organization, which is named as Foundation for Environment Education FEEE, which is a Denmark based organization. The next thing that you need to know is that it assesses the beach on 33 criteria. This number is important guys. You need to know and remember this number as well that there are a total number of 33 criteria on which a beach has to pass. Okay? And these uh, criteria are related to environmental education and information, bathing, water quality, environment management, conservation services and accessibility standards and safety. Do you know that India has its own eco label as well for clean beaches and that is named as beams. So I think that majority of you would know this thing because it was launched last year and when it was launched, we covered it thoroughly again and again. So let's have a look at it again one more time so that it becomes it becomes a part of your subconscious memory. OK, so beams stand for stands for beach environment and aesthetics management services. It was launched in 2020 to keep India's beaches clean. It is India's own eco label for clean beaches, beaches and beams has been able to improve the cleanliness levels of India's beaches since its launch. So this is about beams. Which has become India's first steel company to adopt a carbon capture technology that extracts CO2 directly from the blast furnace gas. So again, you have the five options out of which Tata Steel is the right answer. So Tata Steel has established this first CO2 capture plant at its facility in Jamshedpur. Okay, now what does this facility do? It directly captures the carbon dioxide emitted from the blast furnace. Okay, and then reuse it as the fuel. So that is the basic idea behind launching or establishing this plant so this basically promoting the circular economy on the one hand you have you are emitting the carbon dioxide and you are using that emitted uh, carbon dioxide again as a fuel so this is the circle that has been created so it is a very important initiative because by doing so tata steel has become the first company first steel company in india to have such a facility carbon capture facility so this is all that is written here now the capacity of this plant is five tons per day but this is not at all important for you to memorize don't mug it up it has been given for your information purpose only so guys that was all for today i hope that you have enjoyed the video thank you so much and if you want the pdf do not forget to join the telegram group thank you